Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Wednesday, the last day of July. And boy, July is a hot one. Normally it's very hot in July here in the Southeast United States. Today is uh, no exception to that. Meanwhile, we're looking at the development of thunderstorms perhaps later this afternoon and another batch uh, coming in for tomorrow. Uh, also looking at more of this excessive heat. Right now we're under a heat advisory, maybe tomorrow an excessive heat advisory. And then also what's going on in the tropics? You know, we had Hurricane Barrel earlier in the hurricane season at the end of June in the very beginning of July, setting all kinds of records. The first Category 5 hurricane ever uh, so early in the season. But since then, it's been relatively quiet, but things are beginning to get a little bit more activated right now. And that's just a preview of coming attractions, I guess if you want to call it that, a precursor perhaps of uh, things to come because August is going to get more active in the tropical Atlantic and then the end of August and all of September going into probably the first half of October most likely will be very, very active. So let's take a look at all of this. So first of all, uh, let's go into the uh, the maps right now. And uh, we have a, uh, a lot of advisories for heat across the country this afternoon. Excessive heat up in the northwest portion of the country, in the middle of the country, and here in the southeast portion of the country, even up in the uh, Philadelphia area in New York City, excessive heat or heat warnings in effect there. But in our area here, uh, we have uh, uh, heat advisories in effect for the coastal Georgia and South Carolina areas of uh, southeastern Georgia and southeastern South Carolina with um, uh, uh, heat warnings in effect across central portions of Georgia. And then over here in the Ozarks, uh, further to the west and northwest of us, excessive heat warnings in effect for them. Some flash flood watches and warnings in effect for uh, eastern Tennessee into western North Carolina up in the mountains. So let's take a look at the um, uh, national radar summary first of all. And here we have an uh, area of showers and thunderstorms developing across the upper portions of southeastern South Carolina into the upper portions of eastern Georgia, then central Georgia, uh, all pushing off toward the southeast this afternoon. That's going to be the trend. The motion of these storms is going to be moving from the northwest to the southeast throughout the uh, evening hour. Uh, looking at the uh, National Severe Storms Forecast Center, what well, they used to be called, but now they're just known as the Storm Prediction Center. And there's a, a, a slight risk uh, for severe thunderstorms well off to the north of us in eastern and central Kentucky, northeast Tennessee, but a, a slight chance, a marginal risk for severe thunderstorms this afternoon. The main um, uh, severe weather event will be high winds, damaging winds that could be associated with some of these storms. And also they'll be producing a uh, moderate to heavy rains and also uh, lightning strikes, cloud to ground lightning strikes could be uh, possible with these. Now, the other issue here is the heat. Uh, this afternoon, the temperatures in the Savannah area are gonna be in, in southeastern Georgia in the low to middle 90s. And that's where we stand right now. Uh, looking ahead for uh, the heat index though, uh, that is what it actually feels like against the human body. And that's about 108 degrees this afternoon across uh, portions of coastal uh, regions of South Carolina and Georgia. A little bit cooler, cooler, less hot over in the interior portions as the humidity drops just a little bit there. Uh, but looking at the conditions for tomorrow, uh, the heat index value in the greater Savannah Hilton Head area could be about 112 degrees to 115 degrees. So excessive heat possible for tomorrow. And then what about uh, um, Friday? Uh, looking ahead for Friday, uh, right here, again, about 110 to 112 degrees, maybe 115 degrees in some locations for the heat index. And then going through into the weekend on Saturday, a touch less hot. I don't want to call it cooler. Less hot, 107 in Savannah. And then we're seeing a decrease in this heat index value by Sunday, 104. Um, with that, though, would be clouds and the chance of, of uh, precipitation. Now, Looking at the heat index values uh, coming out of the National Weather Service uh, for our area, these are the values for individual locations across Chatham County. You can see for tomorrow about 111, 112 degrees uh, in the greater uh, Savannah area in Chatham County. Same thing for uh, Friday. Uh, further inland across the interior portions of southeastern Georgia uh, and, and then also coastal South Georgia, we're seeing these values of 118, 113 degrees 
110, 113, whatever that is. That's uh, Guyton uh, over in uh, Effingham County. And same thing again for Friday. So uh, Thursday and Friday are going to be extremely hot and actually dangerous weather conditions to be outside for any prolonged period doing any kind of excessive work. Even a light load of work uh, will result in excessive sweating, which could result in uh, heat fatigue and heat, heat uh, sickness and heat uh, stroke. So be careful uh, if you're out in the... Uh, heat for the next couple of days. It's going to be a scorcher out there. The ideal thing to do though is to drink plenty of water and take breaks and if you can get out of the heat for uh, times, if you have to do continuous work, take breaks and get into, if you can, an air-conditioned place, at least get in the shade uh, during the heat. Now, let's take a look at the Atlantic uh, Ocean uh, tropical weather conditions and here we have systems going on. Uh, actually, one system that's being watched. It's not uh, a, a very impressive system, but uh, what it's looking like right now, it will be developing somewhat and moving toward the Bahamas. And there is the discussion right there from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, but it'll be moving in toward the uh, southeast United States, uh, Florida, coastal Georgia, South Carolina, moving in that direction. That doesn't mean it's going to be a hurricane or a tropical storm. It could be just a tropical depression, or it could develop into Debbie, a tropical storm. I think that's the next name on the list. Anyway, let's take a look at the satellite imagery. There it is right there. There's the uh, system that's in question. It, right now, as you can see, it's not very well organized. And as it moves toward the west-northwest, it'll be moving into an area that's slightly more favorable for additional development. All right, let's take a look now at the, the computer models. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, the United States model. And there's the area right over here in question. Uh, as you can see, it's not very well organized. So let's put this into motion. And uh, this is from today's model run. And you can see it, it's not getting very well organized yet. This is over the weekend going into Saturday. But then it starts to take a little bit of shape. Now, this model has the system moving into the... Uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico off the southwest coast of Florida and then developing as a, a weak area of low pressure. Perhaps a tropical depression could develop out of it. But the key here is this. It doesn't move. Once it gets in this area, it par basically parks itself. And let's see, it gets in this area when? Around right here. Sunday afternoon. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And then it stays in this area until... Well, about there, Friday. So all of next week, according to this model, it's not going to move that much. So it's going to be dropping a lot of rain across the, wherever it parks itself, according to this model. All right, let's go back and let's go into the Canadian forecast model, the uh, Canadian Meteorological Center. They're pretty good with tropical weather conditions uh, and uh, put it into motion. And once again, you don't see much organization whatsoever yet, but then it tries to organize the system off the southeast coast of the United States, uh, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. And it does the same thing basically as a GFS. It stalls it and just keeps it in our area, dropping uh, copious amounts of rain actually over our area here. It stays in the region. Where are we? It begins to pull it out on the end of next week. So all of next week, we could see uh, conditions of moderate to heavy rains each and every day. Uh, associated with this system. Not all day rains, but we could see periods of moderate to heavy rains uh, with this system. All right, I got one other model to show, actually a couple more. Uh, the Icon, that's the German model, and uh, uh, it shows the system a little bit further east developing. Uh, well, it cuts across Florida and then stays just a little bit further east of us, and then it pulls it away uh, by the middle of the week. It starts moving it out, so uh, I wouldn't put too much faith in this one. Uh, and then the other one is the ECMWF, or the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. And the afternoon model hasn't come in yet, so I have to take last night's run uh, and take a look at what it did from last night. And it basically um, is similar to the Canadian model. Uh, it keeps it just a little bit further east, and then but moves it out. It doesn't hold on. If it's stationary anywhere, it's going to be east of the coast, but it moves it out. So... Anyway, the question is, what's really going to happen with this system? Well, we don't know. But right now, the indicators are, once it gets in a particular location, it's going to hang around. 
for a while. So be on the uh, lookout next week for moderate to heavy rains across our region. <laughs> you know, at my location here at uh, Coffee Bluff, I for the month of July, I picked up 13 inches of rain here. So, you know, the ground is rather uh, wet right now. All right, let's go to the forecast itself. And uh, here's the uh, my six-week weather outlook. It's an outlook, not a forecast. But above normal temperatures for this week, well, that goes without saying. Next week, I'm expecting above normal precipitation. Normal temperature is about 91 degrees for the high, 73 for the low. Uh, we're going to be a slightly above that because of the low temperatures are probably going to stay in the mid to upper 70s. The highs might only be in the upper 80s to lower 90s. Uh, but overall, the average will be above slightly above normal and then go drying out for the middle portion of August and thereafter. Yeah, well, we'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, the immediate forecast is calling for, oh my gosh, it's going to be hot tomorrow, particularly and Friday, Thursday and Friday. Uh, be very careful, you're going to be working outside. You know, more people die weather-related injuries from heat exhaustion, so be careful on the heat. Yeah, it sneaks up on you. Sometimes you don't know it. It sneaks up on you. So be careful and drink plenty of liquid. Stay away from alcoholic beverages and uh, 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 carbonated drinks. Uh, they have a tendency to uh, um, take the water out of your system. You, you don't want that. Uh, so drink plenty of water and, and, and electrolyte drinks like Gatorade or uh, other drinks uh, that provide electrolytes that you're losing from the excessive sweating. Uh, one thing I know from being an ex-marathon trainer and marathon runner is that if you stop sweating while you're working out, it's already too late. So uh, uh, you're now drinking for tomorrow. So don't get to the point where you stop sweating in the heat. That means you've run out of water. Think of your car radiator. If it runs out of water, uh, the, the radiator can't cool the engine down anymore and the engine begins to overheat. The same thing happens with the human body. The water is like the radiator and our skin is the, the area where the water is taken away with the heat uh, into the atmosphere. But if you don't have any water to evaporate it, there's no way to get the heat away from your body and your body overheats. So keep that in mind. Anyway, we're going to start cooling off a little bit or get less hot uh, over the weekend, but again, then on the onset of rain, particularly in the afternoon and the evening hours. So thanks for watching and uh, thanks to all my uh, friends and supporters of this channel. Uh, you just saw the list uh, pap uh, going up across the screen right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And if you'd like to support my channel, I have links below to help you, uh, guide you anyway, if you would like. You don't have to. Just just watch and like my channel. You know, Hit the like button on the, uh, the video itself. That, that would help a lot as well. All right. With that being said, I'm going to try to stay cool. It's going to be a challenge. Bye.